This is the sound of success. This car's never run since we've had it. Just arrived back from Mr. Injector in the UK are our 280 SL fuel injectors. Let's have a closer look at them. Wow, they have taken some time to restore these. The first thing is that they have been painted with anti-rust paint, so all the corrosion would have been stripped off them and then they've been painted. Secondly, they have hoses on there now, cut to the correct length with the ferrules on and they also come with proper um, fuel hose clamps. The ones we sent them did not have these little pintle caps on. The early Bosch fuel injectors didn't actually have those. These injectors come with the new rubber donuts, which are for clamping the injectors in. The actual bottom seals here, I have managed to buy the Mexican hat style of seal directly from Mercedes, so we asked them not to include these, but each one of these fuel injectors will have cost about £50 to refurbish. And what they do is they clean them, they change the filters inside them, put on new hoses, new hose clamps, paint them, etc. all for £50. Now you could attempt to do this yourself and save yourself about £300, but unless you have the ability to properly flow test these injectors, um, I would suggest spending the money and getting a professional to do it. An interesting thing to note, if you are planning on getting your fuel injectors refurbed and flow tested, etc., is that Mr. Injector in the UK, and I'm sure it's the same with other professional injector cleaners, insist that you actually reinstall them back into the car within two weeks of getting them back. So there is absolutely no point in getting a set of fuel injectors refurbished and then sitting them on the shelf for the next year while you restore the rest of your car because there's a good chance that they may seize up. When you get your injectors back, you'll also get a inspection sheet here. Um, the initial inspection showed that all injectors were under fueling and had streaking in their atomization. So that is what I noticed when we tested these injectors ourselves. So rather than atomizing the fuel, it was just basically spraying it out. And that is reflected here as well. We also noticed that the um, flow rate on the indiv individual injectors was different. And you can see here that the after the service, the flow rate is increased by about 10%. Remembering that these in engines here actually do take quite high fuel flow on the injectors. It's quite interesting to see what has happened here. Now, these injectors didn't look nearly as bad as some of the injectors I've seen, but still, they're about 5 to 10% out in terms of their fuel flow and the atomization, etc. I would imagine that even if your old Mercedes running Djectronic is running relatively well, that you would benefit from getting the fuel injectors serviced every now and again, or at least checked out. With that in mind, we're gonna head down to the garage. We've had all the fuel rails and adjacent parts zinc plated, and I think we're just about ready to put this car back together and give it another chance to see if it runs. Just before we go ahead and put our new fuel injectors in, I'm going to replace all the bits of fuel hose and also these clamps here, none of which are fuel clamps. So we'll be using the 13 mil Westfield fastener stainless steel fuel clamps and also special ethanol resistant fuel hose from Mr. Injector. This is the fuel line we're using here that's the serial number when you're putting the fuel damper on make sure you orientate the hose clamp in such a way that you'll be able to access it once you've actually bolted this back on and that there is the perfect orientation another bit of advice i would give you is that before you start threading this new bit of hose through your dirty grimy engine dropping bits of rust and dirt and everything else down there to clog up your fuel injectors my advice would be to put a little silicon plug in there and to avoid that happening. As I've mentioned before, these cars are very sensitive to fuel pressure, so I've put a fuel pressure gauge in here permanently, and this is an oil-filled one that basically damps the vibration of the needle. Now, I can tell you from experience that when you put new fuel hose on these fittings here, they are extremely difficult to get off again if you should ever need to. So my advice would be to put a little bit of lubricant on there. The lubricant I use is just the Mercedes lubricant that they recommend for putting engine mounts. It's basically a 
lubricant that does not react with the rubber. So whatever you do, don't put engine oil or anything like that on here to lubricate. Use something like lithium grease, a dab of lithium grease or something that does not react with rubber. While we're in here, we're going to be putting on these rubber boots, new sheathing. The old sheathing was cracked and really hard and new plugs and clips. These will plug into the side of here. Two perfect crimps we just need to put the plug on now and these plugs are ones that clip on and can be removed whereas the ones that were on there before were heat crimped on at the factory now we've got the proper rubber boot on there protecting that from dust and grime in the future when you come to fit the injectors back on your car at least on an m110 engine it's much easier if you take away all the fuel rails and the accelerator linkage you've got much better access to get in here and to be cleaning around all of these little holes here with swabs to make sure there's no dirt or dust in there before installing the new injectors and seals now if you are lucky you will find that your injector seals will just come out like this just take a look at the state of these injector seals. Now, as I've mentioned before, do not use a petrol based lubricant like motor oil when you put these in because eventually the rubber will disintegrate just like that. If the injector seals are really stuck in there, you should be able to get them out by digging a little pick in like that and then just pulling them. Now, when you come to put the injectors back in, remember this hole is at the top. The injectors go in first with the plug facing up like that. Then you're going to put one of these rubber donuts on and then you're going to put a C-clip on. Now, when you come to put on the injector seals, some people put them on at this stage here, but in actual fact, with this style of injector seal, it's easier if you put this in first because this top part of the Mexican hat here has, actually has to fill it in a hole and it's quite a tight fit. So if you have that on there, you may find it difficult to actually push the whole thing in and when these come from Mr. Injector, there's a very bit of light lubricant on the pintle caps there so that they will slide in nice and easily if you pre-install these. When you do come to pre-install these injectors, make sure that they are flat like that against that edge. Now that you have both of those seals in, you should just be able to carefully without damaging the tips of the injector, slide this in, like so. So it does help if you have lubricated the end of that pintle cap. When you tighten that down now, hopefully with a new stainless steel washer and nut, that should tighten that in nicely. Doing this without dropping the nut is, of course, an art in itself. We got all of those fuel injectors in place without any dramas, and we've just test fitted the fuel rail. Now, it is crucial to use some form of non-petroleum based lubricant so that these fuel rails slide in and out really easily because you're going to have to do things like check that you've got the hose clamps orientated. I've noticed that this particular piece of hose here is about half a centimeter too short so we'll just cut another section but all of these hose clamps, fuel clamps need to be accessible so that if you turn the fuel on and there are any leaks, you can tighten them up if need be. We've reconnected all the fuel lines and tightened up all these hose clamps. Now, the one bit of advice I would give is don't over tighten these hose clamps. If you've got new hose, um, which is kind of a really sticky type of rubber, there's no need to do so. And you can always re-tighten them a little bit more if you find that any of the lines are leaking when you test it. Now that we've reconnected all the fuel lines, I have bridged the fuel pump relay. And that basically means taking the relay out and putting a little piece of wire connecting terminal 30 and 87. 
And now when I turn the ignition key, the fuel pump runs constantly. So we've done that and put pressure in the system. You can see the advantage of connecting a fuel pressure gauge in the system. I can now check that this fuel pressure is holding steady, which it is. None of our fuel injectors are now leaking. The fuel pressure regulator is not leaking and the check valve on the fuel pump isn't leaking. So that pressure will hold steady at about two bar and then steadily drop down to about 1.7 bar in about five minutes. Here is the old wiring loom and here is the new wiring loom that we've made up and we're just going to use the old wiring loom for reference to make sure that we plug the right injectors into the right plugs. Wow that took a long time to get that cable harness in. We've just about got it in, we just need to plug this into here now. So, and then cable tie it to here. Just before I put the accelerator pedal mechanism on, I'm just gonna dust over this little fitting here with some Eastwood rust encapsulator just to protect it in the future. It's a little bit rusty and it won't do any harm at all to make it look a little bit better. It is really tricky getting that fitting on once you've got everything else in place. We just need to remember that the bottom bolt there um, is the, also the earth strap for the injector harness. So my advice would be to put all the bolts in loosely if you can, and then thread that last one through. We finally managed to get this fitting here on. Just remember when you're tightening the um, things up in a crisscross pattern, remember to put the earth strap on here, dab of grease everywhere, and then just to finish off some new circlips just to seal all of this in. Well, what a long journey this has been. We've refurbished all of the accelerator pedal mechanism, had it all zinc plated. We've replaced every single fuel clamp with stainless steel fuel clamps, the same with fuel hoses. We've replaced all the fuel hose with ethanol resistant hose. We've tested and cleaned the fuel pressure regulator. We've sent the fuel injectors off to Mr. Injector to have them professionally cleaned and flow tested. We've made up our own section of wiring loom. It just remains now to see what happens when we turn the key in this car? I'm not really expecting this car to start. We've still got to change the spark plugs and check out the ECU, but let's try it and see what happens. Well, blow me down, I did not expect that. For the first time since we've had this car, the engine actually started running and kept running. Obviously, we, it sounds a bit rough because we haven't connected the exhaust manifold up yet, but was it worth getting those fuel injectors refurbished? Yes, it was. I'm gonna finish this video here and go to the pub and treat myself to a beer. I think I deserve one. In the next video, we're gonna be um, changing all the spark plugs on this car, probably connecting up the exhaust manifold and maybe even fitting the rear valance, which has been sitting in my bedroom at home for the last year, much to the annoyance of my long-suffering wife.